So this is Samantha. She's got a lot of coat. We've started setting in her front end uh, with a zero or the, what, five eighths inch snap on come from wall with a 30 blade underneath. So I just wanna lay her neck into her shoulders from this angle. And when I get down to the side of the leg, make sure your dog's standing up nice and straight. When you get down to the elbow area, I'm gonna skim this off just so we have a little bit smoother transition from our clipper work to our scissor work. So I just lift the, lift the clipper up away from the shoulder, start to skim off the top of the leg. And then I'm just gonna work my way back right behind the elbow. I'm gonna come in right behind the elbow to show some separation between the leg and the body. And Poodle should have a level top line, but we wanna leave some neck hair to blend into the top knot. So I'm gonna come in right behind the withers and just blend this straight back, trying to create a nice level top line. So make sure they're standing up nice and straight, come in right behind the withers and just flatten this line out all the way back. She's got a nice top line, so I'm gonna just follow the structure of her body all the way back to the tail set. And I'm using the Wall KM cordless clipper. I've got it on low. So once I get my top line set in, I don't wanna get into my neck hair. I don't wanna push this clipper into my neck hair. So I'm just gonna skim right at the edge of my neck and my shoulder. And then I'm just gonna wrap this line right underneath her to give her more leg. And I'm not gonna get into the tuck up area, but I wanna make it nice and short underneath. To make them short underneath, I pick them up and right in between the shoulders, or right in between the arms, legs, I just make a strip right down the middle where all of this is nice and short, but I leave the hair in the tuck up at this point. So the next thing I'm gonna do so I'm gonna start, since we set in the angulation or the angle on the front, I'm gonna start to set in the angulation on the rear. So I'm gonna go from my point of hip to my point of rump. So there's a bone here and a bone here. We just wanna follow that angle of the dog to set in her tail set. And then from your point of rump here, I'm gonna go down to the bend in the leg, which is gonna be about right here. This will shorten her up in body. But when you get to the bend, you don't wanna go any further than that because we wanna show some depth that goes into the hock area here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I just take my clipper blade or snap on comb and skim out. But you can see how much hock or how much angle I create and then we still have the hock. So now you wanna take the same blade and come over the hips and we start to blend that line in. When I get to the widest point of my hip, I'm just gonna lift the clipper out away from the coat. <clears throat> And then I'm just gonna skim down the side of the leg. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm gonna skim down the side of the leg just to take some coat off so we have less coat that we have to scissor. And then we're gonna start to blend in this line from our spring of rib into our tuck up area. And we want all of this to connect. We don't wanna show any separation from the spring of rib to the tuck up to the front of the back leg. So we wanna connect all of this. So even though I'm using this shorter snap-on comb, when I get to areas that I know they're gonna be longer, I just skim that right off. So I lift the clipper away from the dog just to save me some time in the long run. So never take this hair out initially. You wanna leave more hair on the back of the front leg and the front of the back leg to shorten the dog up in body. So once I do that, I'm just gonna turn her around. And I'm gonna do the same thing to this side. So I'm basically just blocking, it, blocking in my lines at this point. I'm not real worried about the finish because once you have a, or when you have a dog with this much coat on it, 
you want to get the top coat off and all that dead coat off first and then you want to go go and put some spray into it just so it doesn't move around a lot on you and then you want to do your finish work after that so same thing we did on the other side come in right behind the elbow to separate the leg from the body then i'm going to pick up the front leg all this is going to come off and then i'm just going to skim my hips down just to take some weight off the side of this dog's leg i'm not touching the bone i'm just kind of skimming in the way i would normally scissor and then find your point of rump take all this off down to the bend in the leg and then if you want to cheat a little bit you can skim this area through here because we know a lot of this hair is going to come off behind the top knot into the neck area so i'm just going to take a little bit of that off with my snap-on comb but so you can see it looks pretty smooth already without having to put a scissor on it but so here's the key to getting a nice smooth finish where it looks like it's been scissored without having to scissor it there's obviously certain places that you'll have to scissor but so this is a little crown royal mixed up with some water and once i get that bulk of the coat off because as the coat gets long it weighs down the rest of the coat so you, the coat's going to move around a lot on you once you get the initial bulk of hair off so i spritz it with either a conditioning spray or crown royal anti-stat um, something like that and then i'll fluff the coat up but a little bit of moisture in the coat helps bring that coat, helps lift that coat up and it's not gonna move around as much on you. As far as when you go to clip it the next time or do your scissor work. So now this second time when I do my body clipping, I shouldn't have to do, I should have to do very little scissor work when I'm done, just maybe take off some loose edges, but it should be pretty flush and look should look like velvet when I'm done so now that I have it fluffed up and have a little bit of moisture in the coat I'm going to set the front leg up underneath her give her a little bit of chest You can see it's not taking off much, but it's just taking off the edge. So we get more of that scissored finished look. But you can do so many things with these snap on combs as far as getting a better finish, not having to use scissors or thinning shears as much. She's got a really, really nice coat. The dog we did earlier this morning was a puppy and she had conditioned it by mistake, thinking it would help me groom the dog better. So it was a really soft coat. But this dog's well prepared. It's been bathed and brushed out really nicely. It's one of Cat Opson's dogs. So the thing I have left to do 
is just wrap this spring of rib. Just really get that finished. And if you notice, I still didn't touch the tuck up area. So now, when I go to finish my body, although I'm not gonna finish it right now, everything's gonna look nice and plush and smooth. Look, even though it hasn't been scissored, we can get a, a look like it has been. So she got a lot of hair on her legs. So I'm gonna set this angle in a little bit tighter on her rear end all the way down to the bend in the leg and then I just skim out. And I'm also gonna bring this angle around to show more angulation off this way. So following the same angle where I, when I get to the bend, I'm just bringing it out away from the dog's leg. You wanna make sure where the bend in the leg is is gonna be where your knee is if you draw a line straight across. So wherever that bend is, make sure you don't take the knee out. So where you have the, your hawk hair, where your hawk hair sticks out in the back, you have to take it shorter on the front. So if you draw a line from your hawk straight across the front of your dog's leg, you need to make from that line right down to the front of your foot, you need to take some of that bulk of that hair off because we want it to be parallel from here all the way down and then where your hawk is. So because we have more hawk hair here, we need less hair on the front of this leg. That also winds up showing off more knee on the front of the back leg here. So, but I never cut into the front of the leg with a clipper because if you do that, you wind up making it too straight and you wind up losing the knee. So I usually just skim that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side just to get some of this bulk off. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a longer snap on comb. I'm gonna fluff the legs out. I'm gonna take the longest snap on comb, which is the, uh, the E comb, the one inch comb. And the less scissoring I have to do, the easier it's gonna be, the quicker we're gonna get the dog out of the shop. So I wanna make sure I just comb everything up. And your legs should be the same on the front of the dog as the back of the dog, as far as the width and the, not the shape, but the width. So we want them to be balanced from the front to the back. So don't make, don't have big front legs and smaller back legs. You want everything to be symmetrical. So using the longer snap on comb, I'm just gonna follow the structure of the dog's leg. Yeah, I'm using the A comb or E comb. And then I want to make sure the inside matches the outside as far as the shape of it. And I'm just taking bulk off. I'll do more finishing with my scissors. Okay, girl. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the front leg. If you're putting shape in on the front legs, make sure they're holding their leg out, like as if they were moving toward you. Don't hold it out to the side or hold it in 
Um, you want it as straight as possible. Always know how the dog moves if they're out of the elbow or into the elbow before you cut the legs in. Her legs sit underneath her pretty well, so I'm just following the shape and the structure of her legs. Yeah, I'm going all the way down to the skin on this. So make sure your cuffs, you don't leave your cuffs heavier than the top of your leg. Everything should be balanced like from top to bottom. So you don't want bell bottoms on the dogs. So I usually just point or kind of angle the foot down and come right off the front of the foot all the way around. Where'd my yellow one go? Just got a little bit I gotta clean up right here. So now that I have the bulk off, I'm gonna do my front leg first. It's okay, bro. So I'm just gonna spray my front leg before I scissor it. And I wanna make sure that I really get that anti-stat into the coat so it doesn't move a whole lot, move around a whole lot on us when we scissor. And then these feet haven't been done yet, but they're short. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you. I'm gonna comb everything down around the foot. Where we set the clipper line in, I'm gonna take my curved shears and just follow that clipper line all the way around the dog's foot. So I'm not beveling it up yet, but I'm just making my, setting my shape in and making sure that line's nice and clean around where her foot is gonna, be, or her clipper line's gonna be on her foot. So I'm just worried about getting everything off that line all the way around from this angle. And then when I actually set my shape in, I put the foot back down on the table now I'm going to comb everything up. And I just want to scissor a nice little bevel shape right around the bottom of the foot. I don't want it too extreme. Just so there's nothing hanging down over where our clipper line would be. But if you take it too tight here, you lose like the substance in your leg and you wind up making the leg it looks really full at the top and then it gets pinched at the bottom. So I like to leave a little bit more to start with and then I'll scissor my leg into that bevel. So now I'm gonna stack her up. We've got a lot of the bulk off with the snap-on combs. So now I'm gonna come in from my shoulder, come all the way down the side of the leg. When I get to my bevel, I'm just gonna turn my curved shears in just to finish off that shape. So I work my way around the dog's leg this way. So once I do the outside of the leg, good girl. I'm gonna do the front of the leg. So trying to set her leg up underneath her. But always use the curves here because we're trying to make a curve in the leg. We're not trying to make the angles real straight. So we're trying to give it, you know, a bevel shape all the way around. So 
So once I do the front of my leg, then I'm gonna do the inside of the leg. So while I'm looking at the outside of the leg, I want the inside to be the same exact line all the way down. So I'm just taking my curved shears and turning them inward. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish up the back of the leg where usually you don't have to take a whole lot of hair off here because they don't grow as much hair on the back of this front leg. So I just scissor it right up into the elbow. And then we need to, they have like this little cowlick in this area here. So I usually turn the elbow out this way, fluff it up, and scissor it straight down. So then when I comb everything up, it should be a nice parallel line from one side, or parallel lines from one side to the other. So once I get that initial scissoring in, I'm gonna fluff it up again because the coat was so long, it tends to fall down. Just because it didn't have a lot of, um, or it had a lot of weight on it. so over the last six or eight weeks, this coat's been just trained to just kind of fall instead of stand up. How long does it usually stay? How long does it usually stay? I mean, like, the, the, the cut, I mean, like, fall? Oh, once you trim it? No, it should, once you trim it and get that, that dead hair off, it should stand up pretty, pretty well. <laughs> 